Hell yeah. Um, they're I not mean, gonna rem- not yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah to Alzheimer's and dementia. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, shout out to losing your memory. Um, all right, so <laughs> let's move into uh episode, episode three. Yeah. All right. So we there is a lot going on in this one for sure. Yeah. Um Yeah, so the first thing that <laughs> sorry, I was trying to read. I don't do that good. Um so the first thing that we see is father giving a confession to himself somehow or something to to fucking somebody like i don't know who the fuck he's talking i don't i don't think we see that well yeah i mean he's in the confession booth by himself essentially because if he told that story to somebody else the story would have gotten out faster so he's just in the confession booth talking to jeebus and so um i yeah so then he reveals like what happened to him Mm -hmm. and you know what what he's trying to do and yeah like you mentioned before I feel so bad for him because he is he my whole confliction with this was like does he actually think this is an angel and or because the last episode makes me think he knew it wasn't an angel so does he know that this get this whatever i don't know if he knew as a vampire now but whatever this thing is gave him regenerative powers so he's going to take it home because he kind of says this at the end like it was all for you kind of thing to the to the lady um so did he know that this wasn't an angel And it just had regenerative power. So he wanted to take it home to start over with the, uh, with his love. Or did he actually think that this was an angel and he, either way, I think he was trying to do the right thing. Um, Yeah. So that was like, that's, that's what I spent the majority of the show doing is trying to figure out if he really thought it was an angel and this was really God's plan and you know he's really doing it for religious reasons or it was personal reasons and all this was kind of a side effect of it yeah I don't I think that like he you know the whole town goes through so much and they're all just kind of like in a desperate vulnerable position and this dude he's like on his last fucking leg and he goes to Jerusalem for like some sort of miracle to like really have a new meaningful experience with God. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like left him and his town out, like just thrown out to the fucking wolves essentially. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't know. It seems like he's got some dementia shit going on because he just wanders off and bebops off into a fucking sandstorm. Like it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. He mentions it. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, shout I had out no to idea. dementia again, dude. Yeah, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> he's like, I had no idea what the fuck was going on. So yeah. I think when he finds that like creature that's obviously as scary as fuck, but then he like mm-hmm. it saves him, and yeah. then he's like restored and he feels fucking great. Uh, I think he does think it's an angel. I think it. He probably is like, this is ugly as fuck, angel, but. Mm-hmm don't think that they were pretty in the bible you know we've seen pictures of biblically accurate angels and they're fucking weird looking you know they don't look like a vampire but (laughs) they're described in the bible as having like 17 eyes and shit i you're okay i believe you i I I think i don't know there's like memes and shit of like you know all those feathers and shit and eyeball i know you've seen it no I haven't. What? Okay, I'll tag I'll tag you in one. Okay. I'll, I'm sure uh, I'll see one in like an hour. <laughs> well, My yeah, phone. It, exactly. Your phone's listening, so you'll see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I think that 
so I, it, there's so many different layers to that because like, okay, so let's say he does think it's an angel. It's appearance is very strange so is that a test to from like where is his mind at when he when he sees it and he goes okay this is a test from god to see if i'm going to react and run away or stay and follow like that and then also vampires aren't inherently from the devil or demons necessarily but there but like crosses work on vampires so and you even see him burn his hand with a cross Mm -hmm. so the fact that he's in garb in his like jihad or whatever it is what why doesn't the vampire react to that yeah that was weird i his vampire like the vampire is just like all right bro let's go throw some jesus around and like what what the I I don't know what the fuck that vampire was thinking because it like it seemed to me as though <clears throat> it was like an animal you know and then it like fed it like saved him so I was like okay maybe there's like some weird like maternal instinct doesn't seem like it's a mother though it was just weird and then like it like dressed up and like it, they seemed to be able to communicate in some way but it was just like uh, the whole thing kind of yeah that that piece like really is beyond my comprehension i guess yeah um yeah because like you see it walk into a church yeah uh what and like granted it's not a demon per se but it 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 is as far as they're concerned so uh yeah. i i don't i don't know that like that really plagued me the entire show I was back and forth like that was like the main thing outside of like the monologues that was like the main thing I was focusing on especially this time around I was like okay you're in a church you're wearing a fucking Jesus robe like you're saving a preacher Mm -hmm. what is happening and also this preacher is 80 years old he's been around since vampires have been in fucking movies yeah not once did the sunlight thing like come across like hello and also none of i'm about to go off on this show right now why didn't anybody fucking hit somebody with a steak or throw garlic at them they don't have garlic on that fucking island like what is happening like why didn't any he didn't walk by a mirror like all these tropes of vampires and no like there's kids on that island that should have known these things and everybody's just like i don't know what to do what do you do do you shoot it like what i don't maybe maybe this is a universe where vampires aren't in mainstream it that could be it i don't know like i'm sure if because the writers are so meticulous with everything and if they they wanted us to know, they would have let us know. Yeah, so I mean I that's feel, fair. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that vampire's fucking endgame was though. Like, yeah, like, I'll go with you. It sure. Seemed, it seemed to me the only thing that I can figure is okay. So the vampires in this cave, you see the bones around, right? Mm-hmm. Which means the 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 bones are there. There's no fresh kills which means it's probably starving so either the vampire killed him or you know bit him or whatever to feed and when he got better because he spends time in the cave with the vampire yeah when he gets better the pruitt goes i got an island that people would love to see you on and he's like all right fuck it it's better than this cave and the vampire plays along to get to this smorgasbord of 127 people on this island. And yeah. that's the only thing, like, that's the only thing I can think that would, that would make me be, that's the only thing that makes sense to me, that the yeah. vampire is just like, eh, fuck it, this is better than the cave. Like, yeah. you know, cats taste better or whatever. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a definitely a good point. 
They should have, I don't, yeah, it would have, it would have been good to see somebody fucking realize, like, oh, that's a vampire. Because I think even if, like, you know, they were aware and it was brought up in the show, I don't think that the father, the preacher, I don't think he would have believed that it was a vampire. Right. Yeah. But I, they should have, very end. They should have just had like Corey Feldman be one of the, the people on the island. And he's like, vampires, dude. It's vampires. I'm sure of it. Have you, you like, seen his band? Sorry. What? His band? Corey Feldman's in a fucking band. Yeah. Corey Feldman and the Angels or whatever. Yeah. 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 He And he takes it very seriously. And it's really weird. Like, it, yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so, but the only thing is in the next episode, we see Riley, um, we see Riley basically commit suicide. To me, in my head, he was like, I'm a vampire, bro, and I'm not trying to be one. That's yeah. where like, my head went. So, yeah, I think he like knew what the fuck was up because he was like, this ain't right. Yeah. This ain't so, it. So, like, like, he was the only one that ever watched a vampire movie, I guess. The rest of them watched Twilight. And yeah. were like, oh, shit, that's what a vampire is. And he watched, yeah. like, Nosferatu or something. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's see what else. Oh, yeah, the mayor is annoying as hell. Yeah. He's just, he's so, I don't like Fuck him. him and his mustache. He will never be right? Tom yeah Never. yeah you're not tom Selleck, you piece of shit um oh yeah i was not i was really torn on the fact that riley gets close to aaron and mm-hmm. riley seems like happy i was like mm, you don't get to be happy like you should yeah you shouldn't be happy after that so you killed somebody yeah yeah, yeah. and it was your probably your girlfriend so yeah don't be happy yeah. um but also i did really like them together and i was kind of hoping that that was going to continue to develop to the end but obviously yeah. and doesn't. i i love kate siegel the girl that plays aaron oh, yeah. that's mike flanagan's wife you look like her no she has like full ass lips and like a big ass smile uh, like her smile is like okay, Richard you- Stark. All right, look, if you smile, if you smiled, you would look like her. You have the same facial structure and big hair and everything else. When I was watching this, I was like, huh. I was like, I wonder if she knows that. Well, shit, I'll take the compliment. I'll just take the compliment. Uh, I remember that. Um, Yeah, so they're like on his fourth step, like out of nowhere, they just decide to like, do this AA meeting Mm -hmm. and you know so in Hill House they have the AA meeting and the dude goes up to get like his like three month chip or something Mm -hmm. and it's like usually not a thing where you go and make a speech I never had the luxury of going to a rehab so maybe it's a little bit different in a fucking facility but it's like So a lot of times when I see like AA meetings being played out Mm -hmm. on a show, I'm just like, here the fuck we go. Cool. (laughs) Like not how how it is at all, but okay. Um, But yeah, it was just like, I don't know. It was just interesting to see them like get on the fourth step. And granted, I know the show is not about the 12 steps of (laughs) a, a recovery program. Right. Like how the fuck did you get all the way to the fourth step? And that's like, that's like kind of a big one. That's like where you write down like everything that's ever bothered you ever mm-hmm. and what your part in it was. Mm-hmm. And that's just like, oh, and that one's just like a real turning point uh, and throughout the steps, I guess. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then that would also go to imply that the father is Riley's sponsor if he's like taking him through the steps. Cause like you can't just work 12 steps by yourself. Um, someone usually like does it with you and like guides mm-hmm. you through it someone that's already done it mm-hmm. um, 
So I don't know. That was just that was just interesting to see. That, that being- might be the reason he had that heart to heart with him. I mean, like I know yeah. his dad says, like I was talking to Pruitt and he said to tell you these things that have been on my mind. But maybe that was like his role as the sponsor. Maybe Pruitt did that because he is a sponsor. Yeah, he doesn't have a clear sponsor in this, but he clearly was sponsoring Joe, even though he wasn't like through all the steps of the program. He took yeah. Joe, he kind of took Joe on. Um, yeah, it was just it was just interesting to see. And I kind of I definitely appreciate the fact that it was brought up in this show specifically because like there's this weird assumption i mean it's a it's a fair assumption to make that it's like religious Mm -hmm. but like i'm not a religious person right and i worked it i worked the shit out of the no you know what i mean (laughs) but like i don't know it's just interesting that it was like brought up in this show you know because like riley's not religious right and i think that well riley makes mention of like all that was available to him on the island even though he was going to off the island initially all that's available to him on the island is like aa through the church mm-hmm. but he also mentions r and r yeah so that was part of his like monologue thing it was like yeah there's this instead instead of bringing jesus into it because i don't have any i don't have any love for that so like this is how i would handle it or whatever but yeah um thanks to the show um yeah yeah i found it interesting that um everyone sees like this miracle happen right in front of them a mm-hmm. supposed miracle they don't right. know right they don't know. the doctor was like well these things can happen she could have healed but everyone's just like immediately like now that's what I call an act of God mm-hmm. when it's just like y'all are really just not even like thinking of anything else that, yeah. that could, you know been the reason like what <laughs> okay yeah that know how desperate re- they are. yeah yeah they really are desperate and that didn't even really the whole desperation of the town and survival and stuff that didn't really like yeah the houses are run down but they're on the ocean seawater does that to houses these are old houses the wood is going to dry out and rot mm-hmm. and stuff but the desperation didn't really come into play for me because everybody's generally happy for the most part and everybody's yeah, living what they got. oh yeah they're living okay there's no like you know there's nothing that's like oh shit these people need help um, yeah from face value clearly we find out you know that there are some things but um when they took lisa to the doctor and she's like we should really get her to the mainland they were like no 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 we this is this is a miracle from god we're just we're not gonna do any of that like th- that's all yeah. there is to it and she even is like you could be helping other people like obviously they don't know they're microdosing but like you could help other people mm-hmm that out that angered me so much because like i'm very sensitive to those kinds of things like if you can help somebody and it don't hurt you and you don't do it then like shame on you so when i when and that's why i basically was like i fucking hate this mayor guy yeah because the wife and even the daughter they didn't seem like they were against it they didn't seem like they're for it but they were like just kind of like uh and he's like no uh-uh, uh-uh. we've been through enough like yeah. it, it, go get on a talk show you can make tens of thousands of dollars dumb yeah, dumb you're like, about how broken shit you right know? exactly and then nobody's going to charge you to run tests on this like if you walked into a hospital and was like hey i got shot in the spine i can walk again after however many years no no doctor's gonna be like well it's gonna be twenty thousand dollars for the test no they want to study you they're going yeah, to do it pro bono yeah so yeah that that pissed me off so bad i was like oh yeah and we get another good conversation between riley and uh what's his nuts john pruitt yeah 
at the AA meeting. That was another good one. Yeah. Someone finally, I just wrote down in my notes, like, finally, someone being rational, priest is called the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just amazing fucking dialogue in this show. At this point, because I've been back and forth on the uh, on the fence, I, at this point in the show, I was really thinking that John Pruitt thought he was doing a good thing and it was the right thing and that this really was an angel at mm-hmm. this point because of his confession. He doesn't yeah. like allude to anything else. So I, at this point, I was like, yeah, no, it's it's totally it's yeah it's all it's all supposed to be good things so yeah he thinks he's like doing something really good and those fucking wood carvings that he did i am yeah that was definitely he did those were fucking fire as fuck yeah yeah my god man (laughs) yeah yeah they were really really good yeah but yeah (laughs) and of course beverly's a fucking uppity ass bitch um god i hate her so much yeah, she's a fucking cunt. Yeah, oh, I don't know. in the biggest scene that I cried like a little baby when Lisa goes to Joe's house and she has that confrontation with him. Yeah, and and I realized and I realized this time, the first time I was like, "Damn, dude, she lays it on good." I realized this time it's not her. It's the way he's babbling that drew the emotion out of me because he's so pitiful and I feel so sorry for him that yeah. he's the reason uh, that I'm like breaking down. I'm like, oh, poor guy. Like, obviously, no, not poor guy, like poor girl. But for some yeah. reason, I was just like, no, not don't be sad. Like, yeah. But yeah, yeah she, she knows I, he fucked up, you know. Oh yeah, of course. That's probably another like he probably drinks even more because of that, you know. I think that that's probably where his like drinking really set off. But uh yeah, that was a really really I would compare that scene like that scene is so powerful and so good. I would put that like right here next to the Fresh Prince. Why doesn't my dad want me, man? like they're like really close to like extremely powerful and impressive acting and everything else like that i was like blown away by that scene yeah so episode four yeah, sorry sure. you're I'm like just, super I'm... you're super excited to just be done with it like no, yeah no, yeah no. whatever you say can we go to the next episode now i just don't have any notes on it i thought it was a really good scene i just wish i had written something down for it i mean no it, i mean yeah it's a good scene but it's yeah a good, it's a really good character and a good scene um and he has the no he got rid of the gun right mm-hmm. yeah he just couldn't look at it anymore yeah which, so he kept it for a while which was interesting yeah i got yeah, yeah. episode four <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to. 